How's it going, everybody? Matt Borey from AmericanCasinoGuideBook.com, and I'm here, as always, with my dad, Steve, and we have a special guest today, uh, Jean Scott. Uh, she's also known as the Queen of Comps, and we're having her back for an update. We had her on a video several years ago, and then we re-released it last year about her make and her husband making a million dollars in the casino while they were playing video poker. So... Uh, I'm going to hand it over to Steve. He's going to do a recap of the last video in case you uh, didn't uh, see the last one. And then we're going to hop into some updates about how she's doing now. Jean, it's always great to see you. Thanks for joining us today. Well, it's good to be here. I haven't seen you on, on the computer for a while. <laughs> uh, I know. So, so a lot of people, you, you have a lot of fans, and, and I wanted to sort of just recap um, because any, every once in a while you hear about someone going to a casino, they win, win a million dollar jackpot, but that's not what, what you did. You and your husband, you started off as, uh, so we're going to recap here a little. You started off as low level uh, casino players and you used to go to Vegas and uh, you would go on junkets and you played uh, blackjack, but then uh, you learn how to play video poker and video poker was your specialty. And over a period, was it like 20 years? You, you, you wound up, uh, originally you were from Indianapolis, was it? Correct. And, and then you wound up moving to Las Vegas and becoming full-time gamblers. So you started off as recreational gamblers and then you actually became professional gamblers. So maybe you can just give a quick timeline to how that happened. Actually, I kind of, don't like to say that we were professional gamblers because we started out just as recreational. And then people think if you go professional, you aren't having any fun anymore. Um, I like to call us skilled gamblers and we actually never did this full time. We, we both had jobs when we first started. I was doing substitute teaching. I was a former English teacher did a lot of substitute teaching in the latter years. And uh, Brad was working for the government. After he retired, we were now in our 50s, late 50s, and we really didn't want to work full time. So when we moved to Vegas, yes, we played more often, but probably not Back when we were coming from Indianapolis and we're just uh, a stay in hotels, when you stay in a casino hotel, you have a tendency to play more because that's what you're there for. And you only get to go like uh, every couple of months and so forth. So when you go, you play more per day because you're there and you're trying to play enough to earn comps for your food and your room. Once you move to Las Vegas and become a local, then it's there all the time. So you don't have to do those long hours. And we were getting older and already we're cutting down. Uh, our energy level was not quite so good to play long hours. So we were really part time. We just did it more days, um, but shorter time. Mm -hmm. Now, when, when you started out, you were quarter video poker players, correct? We started with quarters and we were in quarters for several years. I tell you, I was scared to go up. I have always been very frugal. And if you know about my books, mm -hmm. it has the word frugal in there. And I've always liked free things and I've always wanted to be frugal. And I have always, and people say, are you still afraid? You, you've made over 2 million now and, and you're afraid of going broke. Yes, there's that healthy fear that if you don't be careful, there are a lot of big gamblers who had a lot of winnings and they have gone broke. It happens because you get wild. And so uh, we, we, we never did that. I was always very careful. And that's why we were advantage players. We almost never, just so rarely, never played for all those years we uh the first uh before we left vegas we never played unless we had the advantage and the point is we could find plays like that because back back when i did that other video which is like eight years ago or something we were still playing 
not every single day. We didn't play things that were not as good as they had been in years past, but you could find plays where you had the advantage. And the more advantage that you have, the, the long term doesn't take so long to get there. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if you're playing with a 1% advantage, that's pretty good. We were playing at 2%, 3%, even up to 5% at times. In the last few years, soon after, in fact, in that video, I mentioned the fact that things were not as good as they had been years before when we won that million in, in a, a, a shorter period of time. We were starting on our second million. Uh, I didn't mention that in the last video and, mm -hmm. and I'm glad I didn't because things were very hard and the last few years, it was hard to find the advantage. And instead of all those big percentages, we were, we were lucky if we got a half percent. And sometimes it was razor thin, thin and it was only like 0 0.1, 0 0.2. And that's really hard. But if you want to update, after that video, we played for the next up until 2000. Uh, so two, 2020, you mean? To, I'm sorry. Yes. Mm -hmm. We, we, we moved to Vegas permanently in 2000 mm -hmm. and that's, and then we played, then we make, made that video in about 2016. And then we just continued playing, trying to get our second million, didn't make it because Brad's health physically and mentally went down. And in 2020, we had to make the decision to move out of Vegas and we moved to Columbus, Georgia where my family is because I felt like I needed some a support system uh, because I, I had friends in Vegas, but you don't have too many friends that if he goes to the hospital, they'll drive you there or they'll uh, stay with him for a while while you go get some sleep and so forth. It's just good to be near family. Mm -hmm. So that made a major change in our lives. We no longer had casinos right outside our door. Well, we moved in January of 2020. And then you know what happened in 2020. In a few months, the, the casinos were shut down. The pandemic came. So in 2020, we never went to a casino. Um, and a lot of people, well, lots of times it, they were closed. But where we live, the nearest casino with good games is four, four and a half or five hours away. We can go to Cherokee, North Carolina, Harris, Cherokee. That's a four and a half hour drive. Or we could go to Biloxi. Something else happened then also later in 2020. My vision became not so good and I couldn't drive anymore. So that really limited. We couldn't hop in the car. Uh, we had to depend, my daughter and son-in-law liked to fish, liked to hike and so forth. So they were glad to take us to Cherokee, but that didn't happen until 2021. And then we couldn't do it all the time because they both had jobs. So we only went to casinos three times in 2021. They had a good game at Cherokee, not so ugly ducks, which we always have liked. By this time, uh, can, can you explain not so ugly ducks for the people that are not familiar with oh, it? It's right. Deuce's Wild. Deuce's Wild was what is your favorite game to play in the casino, correct? Right. And it was called not so ugly ducks because there used to be a better pay table that was over way over 100 percent. And that almost became extinct by now. It practically is. But let me let me hop in here real quick just to explain some stuff. So she was saying that in the last video, you know, it, it was easy to make easier to make the first million. And then it's been harder. She said she used to have a 5% edge and then it was down to uh, under 1%. And that's because a lot of casinos have been cutting the pay tables. They've been, uh, it used to be very easy to find games in Las Vegas over 100% payback. And then they've slowly, the casinos have been cutting the pay tables back and back to lowering uh, the payback to uh, players and raising their house edge. So and also was, cutting benefits. They, yes. they do that too. Yes. yes. But so, 
So that's what uh, she means when they say that the uh, the over 100% game is almost extinct now. Casinos have just been cutting uh, the good games out and putting worse and worse games in. And so then, so, anyway, so yeah. then to, to expand on that, the next best one that was fairly readily available soon after that uh, was what we called not so ugly ducks. We called really bad pay tables, ugly ducks, ducks meaning deuces. This one was not quite as ugly and it was a 99.7. So you couldn't play that alone. You had to have other benefits like the mailers, the free play. And at this point, uh, we were doing something that we had not done before. Used to be back when I was talking about the other, uh, in the other, uh, video, I said that when I say I made a million, I need to clarify that for people. That meant all my play, I lost a lot, won a lot. You only win maybe one out of five times if you're lucky. Um, sometimes you go 10 and 15 sessions and you don't win. Then you do win up and down and so forth. But at the end of the time that I was talking about, about a 20 year period, all that that I played at Brad and I together, we put it together. You added your losses, you added your wins, and we actually had over a million dollars. So you, you, what you're saying is you netted a million dollars after, net, after net, yeah. not gross. Yeah. Yes, and there's Which a difference in that. Very, very impressive. Right. Now, so like I say, we played three times in Cherokee in 2021. Um, Brad could sit beside me. He even remembered he's having some dementia now. And he would, it was funny, he remembered strategy pretty well because it's his short-term memory that's not good, but that that strategy was way back in his head and it was there and he would play when we were at Cherokee and uh, but he would only play for about 15 20 minutes and I would see that he was getting tired and then he would watch me play now he was really excited he would groan when we were almost getting a good hand and don't you know he would rejoice when we got one and so forth but things were going downhill then this year, 2022, uh, I've been taking care of Brad now for over three years. And um, the doctor and my daughter said I needed a vacation. And I got this really good offer from Tahoe, Harris Tahoe. That was one of our favorite places. When we lived in Vegas, we flew to Tahoe. Uh, I, I, excuse me one second. I wanted to point out to people, though, that when you went to Harris and you were playing this not so ugly deuces, you were playing it at a $5 denomination. Yes. So, well, so, so that's pretty generous. And that's why they sent this. They sent you a great offer, too. So well, that's and that's not five dollars a hand. That's five dollars per credit. And you're betting five credits. So she was playing deuces wild for twenty five dollars a hand. Right. And the reason we did, I didn't particularly want to play that high. But that was the only one on the lower levels. They were went to ugly, ugly schedules, ugly deuces. And so to get the best one that I could do, I went, I went there and I had the bankroll. Remember, we've been doing this for, at this point, 35 years. And we, we kept almost all of our winnings other than giving money to our kids and grandkids and so forth. Uh, we never spent any of our gambling money because we had a pension. That's something else I want to make clear. It's really hard. There are people who make their living gambling. I, that's a hard job. That's a hard job. <clears throat> we had pensions. First, we had work, and then we had pensions. And, and so we didn't have to do this. And that's why I say we weren't professional we were still recreational in that we could, we were skilled, but we were doing it because we wanted to do it because we wanted to have fun. 
Now, let me ask you something, because you said you were doing this for 35 years and you said 2020, you did not go to a casino that entire year. When was the last time that you went an entire year without going to a casino before 2020? Uh, there was never. <laughs> that. Never. We always, from, from the time we started, which was what, 84, I forget dates, uh, but whenever we went the first time, first time we went, we didn't know what we were doing. That's mm -hmm. when I went to the library, learned how to, got books, how to count cards. And then we played blackjack for five years, four or five years, and slowly switched over because it was much easier. You didn't have a pit boss staring at you. And, and I never was really good at counting cards. I think my lips moved. <laughs> I'm not sure. We made enough to about break even, have lots of vacations. And that's another thing. We never planned to make money gambling, never. We only wanted to break even and enjoy all the comps. Which is what my dad talks about all the time. If you yeah. can play a break even game and get free stuff from the casinos, that's great. That's all you need that's to do. Making money is a plus. And really, then we, I found out that if you work real hard, you can make money. So for 25 years or whatever, you know, now we are back to, I want to break even. I just, my frugal self just can't really lose all the time. I mean, long term. Um, of course, I lose on lots of session, but long term. Uh, but now, sometimes if I'm on a, what I call a, a iffy play, I count the comps as part of, to get me over 100%. Mm -hmm. I used to never would have done that, you know, and I'm doing better now because I'm playing higher, a little more often, I'm getting better offers. And so my offers are pretty well. So when I got this offer to go to Tahoe, that those offers come because people say, well, how can I get these comps and stuff? Well, what? you have to play. You, your comps are on based on how much you play. And I think Steve mentioned the comps aren't as good as they used to be. The casinos just aren't giving you as many comps, but they seem to be giving more room more room offers. Yeah, it uh, seems to me that they've, they've sort of raised the prices of the, the hotel rooms, but then they're being more generous to give people free hotel rooms to make it look like the comps are worth more than they are. Well, right, and and I can't make any general. Every, every casino is different, and I tell you, it's even different. Uh, even if it's all Harris or Caesars or all MGM, they're different within each casino has like different standards and so forth. Mm -hmm. So it's hard for me to give when I write and talk like this, I like to give general principles. People want specifics. Tell me what casino I can go to and make money like you do. I can't do that. Number one is I don't know how close you live to a casino. See, I'm not making as much money as I used to because I'm not close to a casino. Well, oh. I got I got a, a trick here. You want to get a free uh, you want to get flown out to uh, Caesars Tahoe for free or Harris Tahoe for free. You just sit down and bet twenty five dollars a hand on video poker. Well, and I did you that. For, I did that for four trips, three days each trip. Uh -huh. So I was putting like a hundred thousand through the machine or whatever. Most people. Mm -hmm. You, if you don't know what you're doing, let's say you say, all right, I'll go play that game. Have, have you practiced on the, the computer so that you know whether you're making mistakes or not or so forth? You, you, it's a long process. Experience helps a lot. So I tell you, play lower. <laughs> Yeah, that was right. a joke. What, what, one thing I wanted to uh, uh, discuss briefly here is, you know, quotes, you've been able to do this. You and your husband were able to do this and 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 make money at it. When people <clears throat> tend to think this is, oh yeah, I want to do that. This. this is this is a glamorous thing, and, and I'll always make money, and and I'll live a uh, you know the, this fabulous life with all these freebies, and they'll pick me up and put me in luxury suites and everything. But it's not quite, I try to explain to people that it's not quite as glamorous as you think it is, because there's a lot of work. The, 
let's face it, most people want to go into a casino, slap a button on a slot machine and win a million dollars. And, and, but it's, it's not easy. So there's a lot of work involved. There's a lot of knowledge involved. But, but just to give people some idea, can you say what, how your bankroll will swing? Because if, if you do this, you're going to have days where you lose lots of money. You don't always win. Can you give people some idea how your bankroll would swing, like your, your worst month and your, and, your, and your best month? Well, it's in the hundreds of thousands. Of Wait, you're in, in, in a month, you could lose $100,000? Yes. Wow. <laughs> That's you, even more than I was expecting. And I, <laughs> I do this fairly you often. play a lot when yeah. I say. But, but you could also, I'm sure you had, then you, uh, well, you had to have better months too. Know about the, people want to know about the big wins. Right. Yes, we've had some big wins. And that covers a lot of losses. Right. Uh, I have this saying that if you're on the path of skill, luck will hit you more often. Mm -hmm. See, um, this, this, let's talk about this trip to Tahoe I ju just did because that was wonderful. I had a couple reasons to go there. I needed a vacation. My daughter and son-in-law took care of Brad and uh, I needed the vacation from caregiving. If you've ever cared for somebody that has dementia, you know that that's not an easy job. Mm -hmm. And um, I also could meet a friend who I hadn't seen since I left Las Vegas. We used to live in condos side by side. And I had, we were really best friends. And uh, I hadn't seen her since we had moved to Georgia. In the meantime, she had moved to Texas. We're both 83, we're just three days apart. She lost her husband to Alzheimer's a few years ago. She knows what I'm going through now. Um, and we had some interesting experiences, but it was just so good. Um, I said, if I lost a lot of money, I was gonna go because I wanted to see my best friend. But anyway, we, she went from Texas, I went from Georgia. We met in Las Vegas, cause that's where our planes changed. And then we took the um, same plane to Tahoe. And then we had, and if you go to my, if you go to my blog or you're on my Facebook page, um, I do have a Facebook page, Gene Scott. So you might look at that. I put a lot of pictures on there. There was this limo that was just, all I can say was God awful long. Back when we all, there were four of us, the two couples, it was the same limo. And even then you felt like you were kind of <laughs> rolling around in a, you know, some sort of a big room and so forth. Well, now it was too little. They, they sent the same limo for us because she's a high level player like me. And here's these two little old ladies sitting <laughs> in the back part. And then there's this long bench that we could, have. it was for eight people. Anyway, that was the interesting part. <laughs> and I did, I should mention now, we're talking about big jackpots. I did hit a jackpot for 12,000 there. Something I hadn't, hadn't done. The best I had done in uh, Harris in Cherokee was a $5,000 jackpot there. I could never get a Royal there. This one was on spin poker. And I don't know, maybe you all can put a picture. Yeah, I saw it. I saw it on your Facebook. Mm -hmm. I'm going to hopefully get a, pic, uh, a good enough picture off your Facebook to post here. It was spin poker. I told my dad about it. He didn't see it. You got three Royals, right? Right. Spin poker is a weird, a weird, I call it a weird kind of multi-line. Yeah, it You're is. kind of used to seeing like three lines, 50 lines, even a hundred lines. There's hundred play. This one is just a little square box, but the lines go crisscross. It almost looks like a slot machine. In yeah, fact, it's got pay lines on it like a slot it. machine. Mm -hmm. and, um, and if you hit them in certain positions, you can get anywhere from one, or if you're dealt one, you're, it's nine lines, you get nine royals. Well, usually you get one royal, that's more common. But just where mine came, I got three Royals, three, four. I was playing dollars, $45 a hand. And I hit three, $4,000 Royals on that one hand. 
Then later I was playing 10 play and I hit a $4,000 Royal and then I was dealt a straight flush. Uh, I had a wonderful trip and I brought the $16,000 home because I didn't lose much in between. All right. now, one, the best jackpot you ever have that I always tell people about was you and Brad were playing at the Palms. You were playing quarter hundred play, which is $125 a hand. And Brad was dealt a Royal flush. Was he not for a hundred thousand dollars? Yes. Is that that your... was our next to next to the best. Uh, it, it was our best on a video poker machine. And we've gotten dealt other Royals at the Palms just playing 50 lines or 40 different, mm-hmm. different that. Now the best money that we ever made was not on video poker. Actually, it was on a slot machine. It was a tournament and say a tournament is a separate sort of category. Those tournaments are really extra value to add to your play. Now this was a big one at Caesars, the biggest one they had ever had. It was called a million dollar tournament. And first prize was half a million. You had to buy into this. You had to pay 10,000 to get into this. And you might not cash at all. So that was, but if you played and I forget how much, I think you had to play so much and give your firstborn or something, you could get your 10,000 back. So we didn't want to risk that much money, even though that was at the time we were playing high level, but that was just a lot of money. And plus it was going to be fun. We went in, this best friend I just talked about, she and her husband, the two couples, we went in on that. We each paid 5,000 and we played enough uh, to get our 10,000 back. But a miracle happened. We had Brad playing for us because he's a pretty fast player. The faster you play, Mm -hmm. the better on a tournament. And much to our surprise and delight, he got first prize for a half a million. And then we split that with our friends. They got 250,000, we got 250,000. And uh, that was part of the million, you know, that was part of the million. Matt and, not, sir, Matt and I are I'll still- answer, I'll answer <laughs> another question. Yes, sure. we have to pay taxes on that. People that don't oh, believe yeah. this really happened, if you saw our tax return, you'll see we pay a lot of, back then. We were winning a lot and we were paying a lot of taxes. All right. So I just wanted to uh, recap a little bit here for people who are wondering what happened to you since that last video. So you you stopped gambling in, uh, well, 2020, you moved to Georgia. Uh, you were gambling with Brad for a while, but now, uh, unfortunately, he his uh, health is not as good as it used to be. So you're uh, you've gone out on your own for one trip and and hope with your friend that you used to gamble with, and hopefully you'll be doing some of those uh, more in the future. But but now there were comments that people would post because everybody wants to say something about uh, your video, and and most of them were saying, well, yeah, she won a million dollars but uh, she lost $4 million. But I, I think we've sort of uh, uh, addressed that. But is, is there a comment here? that Let's see. Well, somebody, well, somebody said, they're like, yeah, you made a million dollars over 25 years, uh, but working 40 hours a week for 25 years, that's not that good. But how often were you actually gambling uh, to win those million dollars? That was one question that I, I think had been brought up, but I was always curious about. Well, we never played full time. And, uh, You know what? If you counted the hours I did of research, I used to say, and this is the key to success, I used to say, and I still say it, I did it before this last trip to Tahoe, research, I'd almost do as much research on my computer or talking on the phone with other players, uh, but I scour the internet all the time to get ideas, what has changed, where there's good plays. I spend almost as much time as that as I do as a video poker machine. So if you're gonna talk about hours, well, during that time also I was writing books, Mm -hmm. which that was kind of a double duty. I would make do all this research so I could go play smarter 
And then I would have material and then I would have to write a book. So it's a little hard for me to say how many hours uh, a week we played. Um, but I mean, are we talking like 10 hours a week? Are we talking like 40 hours a week? Are right, we talking like, more than 40? No, well, all right, let's it's say a ballpark. We, we would go out maybe six days a week. We didn't go every day, six days a week, maybe for five hours. Five, so it's like 30 hours a week. Yeah, I, yeah. That's but a then, lot of hours. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, but she made a million dollars. Go out and just have fun and do that. They yeah. golf, whatever. Yeah. It, it was fun and if that doesn't count what i was doing at home for the other 10 hours that week doing research uh, so i guess if you count writing books and writing blogs and stuff maybe it was full time but i'm still doing it and i'm not even near a casino but i'm still i'm not writing books okay I'm gonna, I'm gonna, these are real comments that people wrote. Let's see if we can answer some of these. Money came from all the nuts who bought her books. There is an old saying, gambling is a hard way to make easy money. Well, I agree with that last part. It is, mm -hmm. um, but. But that, so that million dollars, did that count your book sales? That didn't count book sales or anything, No, right? no, no, I, that's a separate business. And I tell you, you don't make much on selling books let me tell uh -huh. you i've made a lot more <laughs> gambling down through the years than i did selling books yeah i think matt and i know that one so now here's an interesting question why is she allowed to play and join slot clubs that's a little hard question to answer because sometimes i wonder that myself i i sometimes said if i owned a casino i wouldn't let me play in it um yeah, I know I've heard someone say before that if gene scott is playing in your casino there's an issue with your casino Yes, that's been said. We never overdid things. Some professionals go in and then they play for umpteen hours or day in and day out, or they have a team and they do all that. Fortunately, we were old enough that we weren't able to burn out a play because we had to quit playing and go rest, go to bed, whatever, you know. That was one thing. We didn't burn out the plays like some do. Um, and what, what she means by burn out the play is if you're an advantage player, there's two schools of there's two schools of thought. One is if you find something that you have an advantage at, you hit it as hard as you possibly can and make as much money as physically possible until you piss off the casino and they either throw you out or cancel the promotion. The other school of thought is you go slow and steady you just keep making money gradually and you don't hit it so hard that you piss the casino off and it's so you took you and brad took the second approach to that second thing. approach uh, we found that we made friends with hosts very we had good relationship with hosts almost all of our hosts knew who we were i've had hosts that have recommended my book to their other players <laughs> so you know there's all sorts of ways um, you try to be discreet when you're just starting out it's better not to have a big piece of paper with the strategies up on you know up to that you're doing the strategy looking at that you know of course I always said that means they don't know what they're doing and they need the strategy chart you know uh, again, it depends on the casino. Um, there's less stress on video poker players than there was when uh, there was a lot of stress on blackjack players. In fact, that's one reason why we changed to video poker. I got barred uh, from playing blackjack. I didn't actually get kicked out of a casino. They just said I couldn't play blackjack. And, and then I started playing video poker and nobody cared. So... Now, another another comment somebody had said is they said she married into money is the actual truth. She didn't make it gambling. What do you have to say about that? Well, I told Brad that comment and he had to laugh and he says, well, you could just tell them that I had just gone through bankruptcy before you and I met. So there's that. <laughs> All right. And uh, here was one. What makes her different than any other? It's simply that she stopped after she won. Gambling is designed for you to lose, even if you win. 
Well, I haven't stopped, so that's the answer to that. Just keep playing with an advantage, keep doing the right things more. Uh, if there comes a time that I can't even eke out close to an advantage, I'm not sure that I'll play anymore, you know? Um, I don't know. Okay, and now we we didn't uh, well just to wrap up here. We didn't get into uh, some of the books you've you've written. Uh, Frugal Gambler, more frugal gambling. Uh, what else? Well, I, I want to mention I do have a lot of books. The first one, the first two, the Frugal Gambler and more frugal gambling, and then Frugal Video Poker. Those are still valuable. They are full of valuable information and also they tell a bit a little bit about our lives and some people want to know the details of how we got started uh, one one of my books i think it's the first one that gives a story how i played uncle wiggly when i was four and five with my mother um and played it for blood <laughs> i've always been competitive so i've told some stories in that and particularly more frugal gambling has ideas about getting more comps. Now you can't use them all now. These are outdated, some of them, but they, there are still a lot that I'm using right now, you know? So uh, those three books, then I wrote a tax help for the gambler. And if you're playing big, almost all professional players have my book about taxes because that opens up a real, can of worms with the IRS when you're gambling big and getting a lot of W2Gs. But the book I then, if you want to like get the first one, the latest one is the Frugal Gambler Casino Guide. That's but the latest one. That book, I told you that it, it's different because your goal should be different now. And also I cover other games, I cover every game in the casino, even the worst game with the worst odds, there are things you can do to lose less on it. Mm -hmm. And so I've taken every other game. There's a whole chapter about a menu of different casino games. So it's for whatever game you do, how you can lose less. So those are the two things that that book, it summarizes a lot of the things but it also covers more. Now, that's a book. Then there is a booklet called The Frugal Video Poker Scouting Guide. And if you're at all interested in video poker, you need this guide because it has over 100 pay tables. You go into a casino, and that casino may have, with all the multi-line, multi-game machines and stuff, they may have. 50 different video poker games. They may have a hundred, I don't know, in a large casino. And you're, you're gonna say, well, which one is a good one to play? Sometimes there is no what I would call really good video poker, but there are some that are so terrible, but there are some that aren't so terrible. You're going to lose less if you have a pay table, even if you don't know the right strategy you will lose a little less if you're on a better pay table. So that's what this will give you. So if anybody wants to keep up with your escapades and keep track of all the gambling that you're still doing, there's two places they can do that. Number one is your Facebook page. You have a public Facebook page for Gene Scott. And number two is you have a blog with the Las Vegas advisor with Anthony Curtis, the guy that we interview monthly about the Las Vegas updates. And uh, if you look down below, I have those two links. So Gene Scott, it was uh, wonderful talking to you as always. It's uh, glad, uh, good to catch up with you and glad we haven't seen you in person in years, but at least this, uh, the Zoom call is a little bit better than nothing. So thank you very much for joining us and uh, everybody that's watching, good luck and best wishes in the casino. Well, it, yes. was, good to be here. it was good to be here uh, and uh, I never, I don't think I'll ever stop not, not loving to talk about gambling, smart gambling. All right. It was great to see you, Gene. Please give our regards to Brad. And thanks for watching, everybody. Take care.